this came about initially from the oppression of local authorities by central government, who seem determined that local authority workers should pick up the cost of the banker-inspired financial crisis. And then the local response has been to ask workers to accept a significant pay cut, up to 5.5%. And that's on top of a pay freeze, which we had last year anyway. It would affect my take-home pay, I think, by about £80 a month, approximately. But the fact is that I should have got an increment soon, which I'm not going to get now because they've put all those on hold for the next two or three years. I only qualified a few years ago, so I'm still paying back a student loan. Um, so the impact of having a pay cut, yeah, I can't even afford to pay into the pension here because I can't afford to take the pay cut, pay back my student loan and pay into the pension. We attempted to negotiate, but instead of working with us, they told us that we would have to accept our new contract or we would effectively be made redundant or sacked. <laughs> Some people, of course, haven't signed and have left. Others have signed, like myself, begrudgingly because we don't want to be out of a job. The pay cuts have had a huge impact and we've lost a lot of very experienced staff and I don't really know how we're going to replace those because I can imagine other social workers may be looking at Southampton City Council wouldn't want to come and work here because of the terms and conditions. Why would they? We're paid less than Hampshire, um, I, 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 which is our biggest you know, neighbouring authority. But they pay, I think it's about two or three thousand pounds a year more to start you off. Um, so we're saying, well, why, why should we, you know, ten minutes down the road get, get that much less? You know, and a lot of our experienced social workers are leaving. To replace those posts that were lost through that, the council decided to get some agency staff in. One of the jobs was advertised in one of the agencies and we're paying um, two senior practitioners at £250 each per day for a period of six months and eight social workers were going to be employed at £230 per day each. You then have to include the agency cost into that. So over a six month period, that's a lot of money being spent. That is at least or even more than £2,000 per month and what the current people are making at this moment. I know the argument will be that no, they don't have to pay pension contributions, etc. But that is a lot of money to be spending. <laughs> told that uh, for some qualified social workers in children's services they would receive a £1,400 market supplement and that wouldn't apply to everybody. So effectively uh, putting a divide between adult services and children's services. In foster care services we're not all social workers in our team. <coughs> we have some people who are recruitment, we have psychologists etc in the team and um, they are not privy to that 1400 market supplement as the department is saying. So you're saying we have to make cutbacks so where did the 1400 come? In fact it just made people more angry and surprisingly it was children and families that said we don't want it. We would rather that you invest money in social work rather than offering all these people because they'd refused, a lot of them had refused to sign their contracts. They saw it as more of a blackmail move than uh, we all actually value social workers. Um, you can't also take away money from one set of people and give it to another. Um, it just doesn't make any sense and it just makes people feel really devalued. Perhaps part of the issue with this Tory council is they don't fully recognise the work that we do, but more importantly the need for the work that we do. If you've never had to access social care services, then you know you wouldn't necessarily know. Um, and I think it would be really good for some of the councillors just to come and be with us for a few days and see what we do and how we work and how important this job is. Here who is striking here are committed to, to, to the young people, the families and the foster carers etc and adults that we are supporting and we will continue to support. I think what people don't realise is that a lot of our job is done on goodwill. A lot of it is done on goodwill, late hours working and those are things we don't get paid for. I think if you speak to every social worker in every team you will find none of those social workers are able to just work to their contractually paid hours. All of us do extra, all of us do over and above. You know, not just during 
the working day, missing lunch hours, but in the evening, and a lot of us do work at the weekends, and that's because our caseload is so heavy. All the early prevention services were reduced or withdrawn at the beginning of the year. The early prevention services were actually you know, doing a lot of good work and supporting families. Now problems are escalating, which is impacting on our workloads. the office last week and I had about an hour between appointments only to find when I come in I haven't got a desk that I can sit at and neither have I got a laptop to use because both are in such short supply so having toured the office to see if I could find somewhere to work with a laptop um, and didn't manage either of those I had to go back to the car park and uh, miss that hour's opportunity to work it's the logistics of trying to fit a lot of staff in a small space and a lot of our team work part-time Time, so there's no set days when people are in and the nature of the job is that you're out on visits or attending meetings or in court so you can't always plan when you want to use the desk. There's been various sections out at different times. There's been a lot of action from the refuse collection department, for example, from street cleaning. The way we're being treated by the council is like we're being treated inhumanly. Some bloke's been here 20 years, 20 plus years, one bloke's been here 47 years. And for him to get a letter and to be threatened with a sack, that's not respect. They're all blaming each other. You know, government have said to the council, you've got to take this cut. And then the council are blaming the, the, the main government for saying, well, look, they've cut our money. And nobody really seems to have sat down to think, well, are there are some alternatives to this. And there's ways around it, but they don't seem to want to listen. This is the easy option for them. Cut jobs, cut services, cut money. There's other ways and means they can bring in that earn the money, rather than stopping our money, i.e. don't put lights on the itching bridge. They can put an extra 5p on the bridge to put it up. I don't think we are looking at some of the areas of wastages by, that might be happening in the various councils. Um, unnecessary spending, consultants coming in unnecessarily, all those areas are things that we should be looking at and reviewing. It does seem to be driven by an agenda of belief in reduction of public services overall. I think it's a very convenient excuse for some of the more right-wing Tory politicians to have a real good crack at the public sector, which they don't believe in anyway. We've already seen parts of um, Southampton privatised. Capita, for example, contain a lot of our um, information officers, which once upon a time was, was part of the council, but now has been privatised and given to another big, large company. With the actions of the government nationally, and the actions of the Tory Council locally, we could well be opening out a period of outsourcing, privatisation, more redundancies, more cuts in services. I mean, it's going to be a free-for-all. We're also, I think, you know, underlying all this will be a, an attack on our trade union facilities, you know, trying to stop us organising against what will be these attacks on our terms and conditions going forward. We should have national action, Unite, Unison, GMB, all the unions coming together and really take, take the fight to the government because actually the fundamental fight is with the, with the government I think. Over the last few years you've got old people pensioners marching to London, you've got students doing their marching and it's about time we stood up as adults with kids and with our grandkids and done the right thing. Heritage here, you know. Our forefathers fought for our terms and conditions, and this Tory government are trying to take them away from us, which we fight for every day. You know, the job that we do, we enjoy. We don't like being on strike, no one likes being on strike, uh, but we need to stand up for our rights. Enough is enough. It's time for a change, and it's time for this Tory government around this country realises that the public sector are needed uh, and built this country. Show them in there who exactly who we are. Okay? We're all out here together, so we stand together and fight them together. 
Are you ready, Southampton? Yeah. No, 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 no. I can't hear you. I said, are you ready? Colleagues, you are in the front line, the front line against this battle, this austerity battle by the coalition government. The local council have acted as errand boys for the coalition government and they're trying to deal with the issue, trying to make you pay for a crisis that's been caused in the international money markets in the US with the debt crisis of a few years ago. It's unfair, it's unjust, and as unions, joint unions, we will fight back against these austerity measures. Royston Smith is going on the news at half past one, where... Yeah. You know, I don't know what going to say yet. Where he's actually going to declare that the reason people are still on strike today, after ten weeks, is because the trade unions are paying them full pay. What an absolute disgrace thing to say. If Royston Smith... Ten weeks into this dispute, doesn't know why you're on strike, then he is never going to get it. We well, need to get that message back to him. And, I, and if that's what his view is, that he thinks you're on strike just because you're getting paid and not because of the pay cuts and the conditions you've got to work under, he needs to do the decent thing today and he needs to resign as leader of... Yeah. We've had solidarity messages from the US, from the Ukraine, from Norway, Finland, France, Spain, Portugal, Australia, New Zealand, I think every part of the globe. Your dispute has a real resonance with, with members in Hampshire, not only because we've suffered recently from exactly the same things that you have, we've been dismissed and re-engaged with less pay, 5,000 of the, of the poorest, or sorry, the lowest paid employees within Hampshire County Council have, have had that imposed upon them. And, you know, we absolutely understand, you know, what, what's going on here in Southampton, but also it has a real resonance because, you know, you, you're at the forefront of, of resistance to not only pay cuts, but also, you know, tax on the public sector generally. Yesterday we had the result from Shropshire, which has shown that there is a majority support for industrial action. And we give our messages of support to our colleagues up in Shropshire in their fight against this, their council. spirit and your determination is going to help us all get rid of Cameron, get rid of this disgusting government and get Royston out. So Stick your Tory cut! Same old story! Tory! Same old story!